Hi, everybody. This is the Human Colony Saturday webinar. Today is January 21st, 2017, and we are blessed to have Jim Charles joining us again to channel. Good morning, Jim. Good morning. Hi, everybody. You Thank you for joining. Um, I'm going to go through really quickly and introduce everybody we have in the room here. Uh, we have Angie, Andy, Astrid, Blue, uh, Amran, Christine, David Allen, Gabe, Jim, Kina, Liney, Michelle, Pete, Rhea, Sam, Sheer, Will, and myself, Bree. And uh, Jim, who do you have the, in the room today? You're in a new location, aren't you? Right now, we're in Gossamer Wood, which is in Canandaigua. And it's, it has some of the most powerful vortexes in the whole United States, in my opinion. And actually, I have a lot of people here, so I'm going to ask everybody to give me their name. Well, I have Lynn and Susan, Susan and I see Erica back there. And her daughter. And her daughter. And your daughter's name is Lydia. Lydia. That's what I thought. And then we have Ray, and we have David, and we have Kareen, and we have Angela. We have Brooke. We have Kathy, right? Mm -hmm. And we have John. So we have quite a few in the room today. So, excellent. I can't hear you now. What happened to your voice, Sabri? Sorry. <laughs> Sorry, I realized I was muted. Uh, that is awesome. I'm really excited uh, everyone's able to join here this morning. So um, thank you all. Uh, we have some pretty cool announcements and stuff to go over. Um, we just went through a few requests and um, just wanted to make sure people are aware, please go to humancolony.org, our website, to keep up to date on current events and announcements. And uh, we do have some cool stuff coming up. We not only are working on a Human Colony book project where we are transcribing videos of awesome channelings to, into a written format to publish as a book. This is a volunteer effort, so if you'd like to get involved, please email max at humancolony.org and we will be happy to include you in that. And um, we're having book meetings every Friday where we are um, getting more information channelings from the, for the book and we're doing um, events for the volunteers for the book. So check out our website for more information about that. Um, also, we have two guest speakers, guest channelers, that are coming in um, in the next few weeks. On Sunday, February 12th, we have Brooke Alyssum, who's joining us again. Max will be interviewing her, or, well, uh, hosting for her, um, 1 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And also on Saturday, Saturday, February 18th, we have Sean Swanson, who is a well-known channeler of the Yael, coming in to um, be interviewed by both or discuss with both Max and Jim, and that will be 5 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. So go to our website for more information. You can go to humancolony.org slash jump to get our event links to participate and also see the YouTube links. Um, subscribe to us, Human Colony 2 or Hukulo2 is our YouTube channel. Um, so subscribe to that. That's where we do these live events, and then we post them on Human Colony TV because this has the larger hangout size. Um, and uh, please don't forget to um, just s stay strong. Keep being your awesome light self. Uh, we've been going through crazy uh, energies recently, being in the celestial solstice, which is going on until, uh, I think, February 9th. So... Um, it's a really exciting time. I know a lot is happening for people. So um, are there any other announcements you wanted to make, Jim? Yes, uh, Alina Kapulnik tomorrow at 3 p.m. Eastern Standard Time with M Max and myself. Oh, wonderful. So, oh, that's very exciting. Yeah, she. If you know who she is. She is an um, international or intergalactic traveler and has a lot of really wonderful information. So. We'll be talking to her tomorrow. Great. That'll be very cool. I know she has a lot of uh, cool stuff that she um, yeah. knows about and does. Um, awesome. So I'm going to make a personal request here uh, before we get started. Um, I was notified that on the 17th of January this month, 
um, there was a very interesting, very monumental intergalactic healing event that occurred where the entire Galactic Shamanic Council was involved in sending energy to this event. Um, the Zeta Gray Royal Monarchs, both of them, the Queen and the King, as I guess they, they term themselves for lack of a better word, have been healed and restored to their ancient DNA. And this has allowed them for not only the ability to feel emotions again, but also um, the ability to naturally reproduce for the first time in many, 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 many generations. So this is extremely cataclysmic and there were multi multi-dimensional humans that were a part of this healing event and uh, humanity's ascension is was the catalyst for this happening. Um, it wouldn't have been possible without all of our own collective efforts just following our own path and and starting to trust in ourselves and and starting to um, awaken. So it's a really huge uh, deal and there's already been some amazing things that have happened. Apparently uh, the, the queen is already pregnant. And so this is going to change a lot. And so there's been a royal decree made from what I've heard by the monarchs that um, there will no longer be any negativity towards humanity from the Zeta Greys in particular. Um, there are different t groups of Zetas out there, but we're specifically talking the, the Zeta Greys. You know, they were um, largely involved in, in the abductions that have happened, you know, in, in our understanding of linear time in the past um, with the genetic uh, stuff that was going on to make sure that their species was able to survive because they were going extinct um, as they had lost their connection to their soul, to their planet, um, and the ability to procreate. So, Jim, I wanted to ask if, you know, there, if we're able to get any channeled information about that today um, because it has been a pretty cataclysmic yes. thing. So, I'm sure if they're so. coming in first. But yeah, we're having a little difficulty. We will see. But um, okay. Because I think well, I mean, we're using is not charged. And it works. Oh. Okay. But anyway, yes, we will. Uh, <laughs> we're okay. So um, awesome. But yes, yeah. I'm not sure who's coming in first, second, third, fourth, but um, or even yeah, we'll see. But or or at all. But I just wanted to throw it out there and let people know. Yes. Um, this is um, this is a huge turning invited. point, I think. They have been yeah. invited. Awesome, and so we did have some other requests um, for some other beings that we had gone through, and uh, so um, just a quick reminder, please, everybody, especially in the room here, please turn off your notifications so we don't hear dinging. Um, please stay muted unless it's your turn to talk, and um, also. Um, uh, well, I think that's it, actually. <laughs> so, yes. um, yeah, thank you all for joining. And I think that we are able to get started with some blessings. So let's see. Um, let me see who was lined up here for blessings. Are there any blessings in the room with you, Jim? Angela here. Oh, wonderful. Go ahead, Angie. Hold on. I'm going to do an angelic blessing. Okay. Thanks. Awatiya <laughs> Yes. Great are the energies that come to the world through this area, through the thoughts and prayers of many on your world. You are blessed to be able to move forward in your enlightenment without being stopped or persecuted. There are many who, in many lands, in many different species that cannot move forward as easily because of oppression and because of darkness being very close by but you are blessed and let the light continually shine on you so that you may move to your next
plateau of understanding. That was beautiful. Thank you, Andy. Um, I will do a quick blessing. Namaste. Countless eyes are watching as you move forward. Your ascension is vital to the strength and health and well-being of the galaxy and universe. You have been chosen as one of those hybrid places that will send out energies and goodwill and health to those that are struggling and need this kind of situational development. Wow, thank you, Jim. Awesome. <laughs> um, will said that he was willing willing to do a blessing. Absolutely. Good morning. Much love to all. Good morning. Namaste. Be not afraid, even though our voices are soft, our message is loud. God is with you and will brighten your path and lighten your path. He is there to help with your manifestation of all things that are needed during this time. Do not doubt that he is with you and do not doubt that he will bring you through the hard times in a much easier way than if you should struggle with the darkness. Do not put up with it, but just cast it aside for he is looking out for you and it is your vision into the light of the next time period. Absolutely beautiful. Thank you, Will. Um, Michelle. We send you our vibration and our colors, even though they may not exist in your world in exactly the same way. We lift you up and are with you to support you in your movement forward. We love you and are your neighbors and will continue to be there in your times of need. But call on us if you need a special care for we have a special answer. Thank you so much, Michelle, that is beautiful. Uh, Andy, it looks like Andy is willing to do a draconian blessing. Greetings, everyone. We are new. I are the Allah. I am the 
Though the times may be harsh, and you may be going through times that may not be the best, there are answers coming, and we are here to help as well. Although our voices may cause you to quiver or shake, do not be afraid. We are as you in spirit, and we would like to lend our spirit to yours and like to join in with peace and understanding be not afraid we are friends of the universe we are more than just friends we are your family that is how close we are thank you andy thank you jim all right. Um, now we're we're getting lots of people volunteering for blessings. Thank you, everybody. I want to keep going with blessings all day long, but um, if you guys could please provide blessings at the end if you're able to stay, I feel like we need to move forward with the channeling. I think um, information needs to definitely come through today. Some important stuff. So sorry, I don't mean to. Uh, cut anybody off from providing us awesome blessings. So please continue to send your beautiful energy um, in the background. Um, all right, then with that said, I think we can get started, Jim. You good to go? Yes, there's so many beautiful blessings out there and we thank you for them. And that energy does not stop because you didn't give your blessing, but it is moving toward us and also in, uh, edifying us as we move forward. So thank you very much. And as you said, some of those blessings can come at, at the end because they will have just as much importance then as they do now. So um, much love to you all. And let's see who's coming today. There's many people here. This is a very energetic and powerful place that we're in today. The vortexes here are incredible. And the people that are here also have wonderful energy and very high positivity. So I'm very happy to announce that there's a lot of very good energy moving even between us. So that's a wonderful thing. So um, thank you for all your blessings. And we'll let's move forward and see who comes first. Everyone has been invited. And those with the greatest messages will come through. So thank you very much. Let me do a little meditation and then I will start. Ah, many thanks for your love and support today. I am Uriel. I have come to be with you for the first part of this meeting together. We are here today to celebrate many things. There's changes in energies, changes in thought processes, and many blessings to be had by many people. Although many people are going through changes and understand that sometimes change can be uncomfortable, but the outcomes of these changes will bring great blessings to you. Now, let me talk for one moment about some of the things that I have to bring to you. There are different kinds of educations that angels can bring to humans that humans may not know about. But we are here on your world 
getting closer because we need to communicate in a way that is friendly and whole and is vital to, to you moving through these times of great turmoil with great ease or greater ease than you might normally have done. You may say to yourself, I have been struggling or there's not enough finances or that there are many troubles in my family. No one understands me. I cannot communicate. There may be interjections of energy that you don't understand. But let me tell you this, we are here as well as God the Father to help you through these times. It is not a time so difficult that you cannot survive, but there are things coming that you might find unpleasant. But you may move through these times with great joy because you know that we are with you. We, you know that you are supported and you know that you are uplifted. Now, do not fall into the error of understanding that you must go with the flow of everything around you in society because society is a culmination of many kinds of karma from many kinds of people. You understand when you go out into the world and feel the different karmas that are mixed into society, they all come to form a sort of a gray barrier to your spirit because it is not all the thought processes of beauty and unity and Christ and godlike or angel spirits, but it is all those karmas that exist within the world that have come together and become a blanket in society that makes you want to, that they want to tell you how to live your life, tell you how you should be, tell you what is right and wrong. But you know that within yourself, your personal right and your personal wrong is what resonates within you. And you must lift yourself up in the sense that you know that society is a blanket of all karmas, good and evil, so they do not mesh maybe with your own. And so you must be yourself and speak your truth and be the light that is the truth and not fall into the trap of fitting into the holes or the spaces that we call society and what is what they want. You must be yourself. We have said this message many times, but now it's time for you to shine and to show who you really are. So what if they do not accept your message? You can be an example of positivity that is not shown anywhere else. And what happens with this? Oh, will you be tortured? Will you be set aside? Perhaps. But why? Because they are maybe jealous of that kind of energy that comes from you and may sometime actually connect to it and actually become part of it for a moment and feel the joy and feel the truth that is within you. You want to be those that shine out the truth, that shine out the positivity, and not to embrace that what society says must be. Because what society says must be is not true. They would have you fit into a place where you're neither good nor evil, where you are just something in between. But that is not who you are created to be. You are not created to be someone in between. You are created to be someone unique and special. Someone full of love, full of understanding, full of goodness, full of light. You are not meant to be gray. You are not meant to be dark. And you are not meant to just fit in because it's easy. You are meant 
to shine. And you do. When you are yourself, when you shed and give out what truly is part of yourself that God has given you, what is that? It's nothing but light. Because when you started in this life, that's what you started as. You started as a child, an infant, with a blank page. You were a light. And then society came in and tried to cover it all over, tried to make it something different. But now you understand who you are, hopefully, and understand what negativity does and understand where you're moving and you will let the light burn in you and burn out those things that don't belong. <laughs> it is the truth that it is hard to survive in a world such as this and not give in to some of its temptations and some of its cruelty but those things that have said, uh, those words that come to you from society that say, oh, this is wrong and that is right, you must personally examine. Because who you are is important. Your original uniqueness is important. Your healing energies are important. Your words of uplifting and support are important. Your hello with meaning is important. It can change somebody's life. Day. How you move forward can change your actual being can affect the way things happen. You can walk into a room and feel the negativity and feel the, the anger and the, and the social griefs. But you can also walk into that room and change it. If you believe you can. You can give yourself and your energy to the room because you're stronger as a positive being than they are as negative and unbelieving or those that are not committed to anything. When you are committed to something, especially if it is in the positive world, it's three times more positive and powerful than anything negative. You can believe that because when you, if you are someone that follows biblical thoughts or follows spiritual thoughts, you realize that when light shines out, what happens to the darkness? It goes away, does it not? <laughs> it hides in the corners and in the shadow. It cannot face the light full on. How powerful is that? Think about that. How beautiful that is. How beautiful you are. Uh, many of you do not know how beautiful you really are. You may say, oh yes, I'm a good person. Oh yes, I've done some good things. Oh yes, this was done and that was done. And, but I'm, all, I'm really not that good. And, and the reason why you say that is because maybe you passed up some opportunities to be better. But let me tell you something right now. You are perfect in the eyes of God right now. Why? Because he loves you for who you are and who you've become so far. So far. So far. Don't let this be the ending of your growth. Shine. Be bright. Study if you must. Understand if you must. But I think that you have a basic, real understanding of what kind of 
people you are and why you need to be that way. So now I take this time to speak to you words that you've heard before, perhaps many times, but it needs reiterated now and then to keep you strong, keep you firm, and not let you go back into a withering past or feel weak, because you're not weak people. You are not, with God, a weak individual. Strength is always with you at all times. Power is always with you at all times. Love is always with you at all times. And what is love? The greatest of the powers. For if you reach out and give of yourself, is that not a portion of your love? Is that not a portion of who you are? And the greater your love, the greater your understanding of everything. Because if you see things through the eyes of love, you can never see them any other way. You can never understand them in a dark way again. Oh, you may turn dark, but you'll still see what you saw when you were seeing the love and the light. It will never pass. You'll never be able to forget it because it will leave that impression on you. I love you all and God is watching and God loves you all as well so be who you are and let him help you to be greater than you ever thought you could be yes is there any questions for me Hi, Uriel. Thank you so much for joining. Yes, we do have some questions for you. Um, Andy was uh, wanting some clear. Well, Andy's draconian family was yes. wanting some clarification. He said the there used to be rivalries and enemies between the archangels and the draconians. So they are asking, who are you? What do you have to offer to the draconians? And what do you desire from us? We do not desire anything but your understanding and respect. There is no longer any bar, any um, great troubles between us. There is no longer anything that would keep us from being friends and from being uh, neighbors, as it would. We do not require anything but respect from you, and we will give you the same, and we will unite and be in harmony, because harmony is powerful. You know, I said many things that were powerful, but harmony is one of them. When we work together as a team, and we work together knowing each other as friends and neighbors, then we can accomplish even more than we could as individuals. So let us work together, if that is what you would like, and we will happily do that. Okay, thank you, Uriel. Um, Christine has a question. Yes, um, Uriel, I was wondering, um, usually when I say a prayer for something, sometimes I can feel it from the heart. I actually feel my heart expanding. But other times when I'm saying prayers, I don't feel that, um, I don't feel it in the heart. I'm saying the words hoping to get in touch with it. Like, for example, um, government, you know, I'll say um, prayers for divine government, but I, does it devalue the prayer any because I can't? Absolutely not. Let me explain. Okay. Humans and many other species have emotions. And there are days when you wake up and you're the sunniest of skies. 
And there are days you wake up and you're sometimes a foggy morning. And sometimes you wake up and you will be a rain cloud. But it doesn't mean that your prayers are not going through as you pray them. The energy of a prayer is this. When you pray for something, that energy goes directly to two places. God and the place that you are praying for or the thing that you are praying for. And that is then a triangle because then God sees that thing that you are praying for. And triangles are very, very powerful. So do not discredit it if you do not feel it. Because sometimes when you start something, when you start a project sometimes, sometimes it's a very exciting project and sometimes it's one that you go, oh, I'm not really looking forward to this. But if you put your energies to it and put your understanding to it and put your and bring God into it or bring the spirit into it, if you will, it can change the whole project and the outlook of it in time. It depends on how you are moving that particular day. Now, your heart is seen by God always, and your soul is the flame of God that he put into you as the beginning of life. So do not discredit any prayers that do not have an emotional attachment, because that does not necessarily mean that there is no power in it. Words are powerful. Let me explain. When you speak into the air, if somebody is yelling and screaming, what does that do to the atmosphere? Destroys it. It makes the whole atmosphere down. It brings everything down. But when it's someone is speaking beautiful, wonderful things, it lifts the room. It makes the room happier. It makes the room full of the spirit. So whenever you're saying these powerful words, you may not feel them, but they are powerful. And if they're positive, they're in effect somewhere at some place and in effect right with you. Does that make sense to you? Yes. Yes, it does. It's beautiful. Very good. Thank you very much. You are welcome. Beautiful. Um, we have a question from Sheer. Sheer, wonderful. Hello, Uriel, light of God. How are you? I am very well, very well. Uh, first of all, I feel that we have a connection. I once um, wrote a screenwrite and you were in it. Well, your name, it was an homage for you. So yes. I think we have uh, some sort of a connection. Um, yes. I have a question for you. I have been told from the El Yaha that approximately uh, 17 billion years ago, God saw me. I was some kind of a, a cloud, like the one that we are in. And he decided to make me a creator being in the creation realm. Is, it, is that an I am being, or is there a difference? Can you tell me? A creator being is one that has many of, a creator being is able to create by speaking things into existence, by knowing things that cannot be known by the normal uh, corporeal or sentient beings around. So yes, there is a specialty, special thing that happens with creator beings because God puts them above other beings. But yet, they will not ever get haughty or proud, or at least they shouldn't. They are those that understand that they've been given privilege and that they are there for a specific reason and they are there to help God with his creative world, his creative universes. So yes, this may have happened many billions of years ago, but it does, make, it does not make any, you any less powerful or any less humble. I see, and well, I do have memories from there. 
I don't know that I'm still connected to that. Of course. The, the connections of the past will always be. You will bring everything forward with you because how can you leave it behind? Everything that ever was in your lives, in your paths, are here with you right now in behind your chakras, within your being, and, and ignite when you have wisdom to understand what that is. Now, some people may never understand <laughs> their, that they are past lives and that everything that they ever was is within them, and that's fine for now because that's what the way God wanted it, obviously. But within you and without you, you can find all those places that you were and that you are. I see. And last question, can you tell me something about our connection, me and you? When you are a creator being, of course, there's a connection with the angelic realms. We are different, but yet we have similar thought processes. The angelic realm is here, though, to be a specific service to humanity and to certain species. We are here for service, communication, healing, understanding, representation. We are here for service. And that is something special and we find it very humbling that we have great energies, but yet we are made to serve. Thank you very much and much love to you. Much love to you. Thank you so much. Uh, Gabe has a question. Hello, it's Gabriel here. Uh, Greetings. I wonder about what happens when you die. I feel like I have like, recently I had two dreams where I go, like almost where I go. When you die into the light like a lot of s people who talk to spirit is that they see a big light when they die can you talk about what happened when you die here on Earth? there is something beyond the light but let me tell you this there are many different belief systems on your world many believe that you go here or go there or go wherever after you pass on and the first thing that you will see when you pass on is that which you believe exists there beyond the realm of humanity but then the next thing you see will be everything that exists additionally there is heaven there is oversoul there is great spirit and light but there is so much more than what you can possibly imagine. And therefore, when you pass into that realm, you will see what you expect first, because then you won't be frightened. But then you will also see all the other realms of the Oversoul that there are, the different areas of heaven, the different thoughts and experiences and colors that don't exist where you are. And this becomes yeah. where you go. And you can, and you have free will there as well. But we'll get into that some other time. <laughs> yeah, I kind of got yeah, I'm afraid of that, basically. basically. Is that because I'm not ready? That, 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 that is why. And that is why I told you what I did. Because I knew that there is fear attached to some of your visions. You do not want to pass in there. There is a fear of the unknown, of course. Many have fears of the unknown, and they don't know what they're going into. They think, oh, was I good enough? <laughs> it has nothing to do with that. It is how much God loves you. He will bring you. Oh, yes, he might have some lessons to teach you, or things to tell you. 
or things for you to review from your past life, this present one. But do you think he would deny his children the greatness that he had created for them? Would he deny them that because of something bad that they did? He would perhaps bring them in and let them see what it was that they did and what effects it had. And with their present knowledge where they are, that would make a difference, wouldn't it? Yes, it would. And that's all I'm going to say for now on that. Yeah, thank you so much. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay, um, we have a question next from Kina. Um, she's asking. Um, she wants more understanding on how we can make our prayers as powerful as possible. She's saying, um, can we do it? Is it more powerful if we include different beings, elements, or is it only a matter of different points of views and levels of consciousness? Here is the answer to that. Your belief system tells you that the greater your prayer is, the greater it will be heard. Your belief system dictates many of the things that surround your life. You believe this, so you have that. You believe that God exists, so you will pray. You believe that uh, uh, there are many things that you could possibly believe, but let me tell you this. A prayer in sincerity can be no more powerful, no matter what you add to it, because the purity and power of a sincere prayer. What do you need to add to that? Nothing. It is the truth. It is the power. It is the love. It is the intention of the prayer that makes it powerful. It is not all the hoopla that surrounds it that makes it powerful, but it is the sincerity, the intention, and the love that's behind it that makes it most powerful. You can bring in all the greatest powers of the universe to help you to pray. But if the prayer is insincere, powerful as someone who just says, thank you, God, and means it. Does that make sense to you? Yes. That's beautiful. Thank you so much. We have a question from Amran. Hello. Hello, Uriel. Yes. Nice to speak to you again. <laughs> to you again as well. I have a question. I don't know how, how often you visit me, but I have a question. I have spoken to you telepathically before a long time ago but I have a question regarding the light body the crystalline light body it seems that I am I am actually preparing for that in a way but that I also sometimes easily can can feed, can merge with with the light body not completely but just feel it in my body and it changes the quality of my body, the cool. sensation, yes. I become light completely. And yeah. when I look at nature, this happens. When I heal, this happens. And also when I look at people or feel the energy of people who, who are uh, in light bodies. So is there, and I, I'm really confused. I'm like, am I entering the light body or what is happening? <laughs> it is very simple. 
At those times when you enter the light body, it is when you've given yourself over to the belief that you are in the light body and that it exists with you and that it is part of who you are. And that is a beautiful thing because the light body is a higher form of who you are, a higher form of the elements that created you. And when you are in this light body, you can feel certain things that you cannot feel in the three-dimensional body. And you can actually connect more closely with some spiritual aspects. Is that not true? Yes, I, I will be high, I become highly telepathic. Like I can, my heart actually, even my heart steps out and my brain goes in, stays in the background and it's like my heart is rolling me or, or showing me the way and it is really, really strong. Um, so what is the confusing part? What is the what? The use of the heart? The confusing part. Why are you confused? Oh, it's just that um, it. I'm. I was. I was wondering because when I was looking at at my because when I surrender sometimes to all of the sensations in my body, I enter the, that state, and then I was yes. wondering is is my is my brain um, releasing chemi chemicals in my mind to become crystalline, and is it? I was just like, don't I need much healing before I can um, no. go in that direction? Let's, let me put it this way. You see, when people believe they are moving into the crystalline body or into new dimensions or new destinies or new densities, and their belief system is strong and they are able to do it, they are in their purest form and they may move there purely. They do not have to be healed because why? Because there is nothing negative coming with them into this state. They leave all of that behind. They leave whatever cannot move into that density or into that experience behind and become something different and are able to worship, believe, feel and sense in a different way. Does that make sense to you? Yes, it does. It does. I think it's just the and that is what of the process. And so therefore, I'm thankful that you are able to do this because not everyone can. Okay. But it actually gives you a greater understanding of higher spheres of spirituality. It does. And I was just wondering if, if it was the light body or not, or it was just another state. You believe it was? Well, I believe it was because anytime I say light body, I become light. Anytime I say light heart, my heart becomes light with my brain. And, and it's like, I mean, the atmosphere around change, it, it's like, you get closer to the astral dimension, in a way. I see who you are. And whenever you picture and know that you're moving into the light body or the light understanding, it is what is happening. Because you are a faithful child of God, of the spirit, of greater understanding and love. So, Relish that time. Be well, my child. Thank you very much. I am actually in that state now. <laughs> yes. Thank you. Thank you so much. Okay. Uh, Michelle is asking for a clarification on something you had said earlier, Uriel. Yes. Hi. Um, you were... When you were uh, giving us a message, you were talking about um, we bring you love, we bring you color, we bring you healing, something to that effect. And um, yeah. I, I wonder if you could tell us what the meaning behind we bring you color is. Color is healthy. There is, there is health in color. There is health in the brightness of color. 
The depiction of color can help you with your mood, your understanding, and your forward mo movement. Your chakras are colored for a reason, so that we can understand where it is you need your strength, and you need your uh, upbuilding or your edification. So there you have red, green, yellow. But when I bring you colors, I bring you more than just those colors. Colors that even you cannot see at this time. The ones that exist in other dimensions and other realms that are greater than the colors that you can see. And these are uplifting as well. And in these moments when we bring these colors, you are brightened all through your chakras and all through your auras because in your auras are those colors that you cannot see. <laughs> Uriel, the, um, prior to uh, you coming through, I did a toning and they also mentioned the colors. So I was wondering if you could tell us who that was from. That message. Yes. The Hathors brought that message to you because they knew that the angels were here. The Hathors are a very angelic-like group and use Tony vibration and energy as the healing modalities and colors. They are great healers in this universe and their greatest achievement is that they can speak healing into people and into beings and they can speak their healing energies into different uh, sp uh, species and into different even thought processes. They are above your normal kind of healers, but they are very happy to be able to work with you. Oh, much love. Thank you so much for that clarification. You're welcome. Beautiful. Thank you so much. Um, okay, we have a question next from Sheena. Hey, Uriel? Yes. Hello. Yes. Very well. Greetings. Greetings. Uh, I was wondering if you could help me out with something uh, due to this. People are um, wondering their uh, sensation and, you know, things happening in their body, very strange. Yes. And I, uh, I do have a full awakening Kundalini. So I, I, was, I, I I'm sorry, I didn't hear that. Uh, I see a full awakened Kundalini. And oh. I believe are awakening to the kundalini that they have these sensations and then may, maybe mix sometimes things are because it is colors it's it's everything yes it's dark it's all at the same what did you want to can know you, why is this happening uh, can you check can you check please tell us how this and how and how um, uh, action can be? It's uh, because it's a life force, the source of God. Yes. In, in humans. Yes. If you could the Kundalini. That. You're wanting to know about the Kundalini and how it's awakening your body. Yes. There are many because, because many people that they are experiencing a kundalini awakening yes. and it's different from yes yes for everyone because each person is an individual in god's eyes and each person is unique and their kundalini is also unique make, making them um, awake in different ways some people have very strong kundalini awakenings in the heart area some have very strong kundalini awakenings in the root chakra area. Some have very strong awakenings in the third eyes. The reason is, at the time that you are receiving this, 
those particular areas are the ones that need fed the most at that time, or they're the ones that are open the most for this kind of activity. Now, there are those that have activity all over the body, from the root all the way to the crown, and feeling great sensations of different kinds because of the kundalini awakening, because they are ready for that. Um, but it is God's way of showing you how the, the, the chakras work, how your power centers work, and why they are there. You are there to exhibit beauty in this world, to exhibit, be an example in this world. And they, you can be a very sexual being, you can be a very enlightened being, a very creative being, a very... There are many different kinds of people out there for many different reasons. And so therefore, it is not wrong for you to experience these feelings or these stirrings because God made all these things within you and and the time that you are feeling them the time that they are awakening is the time that they are meant to awake and they are the time yeah. they are meant to be fulfilled or to to be brightened does that make sense to you I think that you're looking for something more though and I know what that is but it is an individual message to each person why that particular uh, portion of the chakra has brightened for them at that particular time. You realize in the root chakra, the root chakra is like the seed chakra. It was there first, of course. It's the base, the instinct, the survival, the, cre the basic creativity the basic of who you are, your connectivity to the universe, to the earth, to all the things that are in the lowest forms. But in that root chakra, there are the shadows of all the other chakras because it's like a plant, a tree, that grows out of a seed. Do you understand? And as you, as, as you move up the evolutionary chain or the spiritual evolutionary chain your chakras get brighter and they become different in different ways in your spiritual development so therefore think about that think about that your chakras have spiritual development as well because what did, each one has representations of different things and different ideologies and thoughts and things of this nature so in your case, you're feeling more than one chakra brighten, aren't you? Yes. That is because uh, my second day is, is. I cannot uh, hear. You. Like you're breaking up a lot. Yes, yes, it's a disturbance uh, on the line. Do you hear me better now? Yes, that's better. Yes. Uh, in my case, I have you know my cranial nervous straight up uh, in uh, like six years and there was a reason it's for still that still today it's still today it's in, still brightening today it's uh, in my uh, sacral chakra it's like um uh I understand. Yes. I know what you're saying. <laughs> um, and there is a reason for that. It is a and it is a personal reason. And I think you know exactly why that is happening in some ways. Because you needed that right now. It is your it is not only a bit sexual, but it is creative. It's more than more than one thing. Your orange is bright. And so that is telling me something about you and about why your chakras are brightening. And it is an individual message to you. Now, understand that I am not going to give you all those words right now and all those meetings, but I think that you already have some of them anyway. Yes. Don't you? I thought so. 
<laughs> and yeah. you are aware <laughs> that this is not going to stop right away, aren't you? Excellent. So this is what you need to understand right now, is what you are going through is the necessity that you need to go through right at this moment. I could go into many de deep definitions of why it's happening, but I think that you know pretty much already what's happening and why. Yeah, yes. My blessings on you and Did for your future with this particular okay, it's breaking yes thank you beautiful it's, uh, the, the line is uh, kind of breaking here okay you can go back and listen yes you were breaking up that. yep thank She's you very much you real much love I'm thank you much love Me to too. you thank okay you. we have a question next from christy Hello, Uriel. Greetings. And um, my question is about the gatekeepers, the Archangel gatekeepers. Uh, I was yes. told that Archangel Michael is my gatekeeper. Yes. Could you expand you on like, that? What would you like to know? A, a gatekeeper, it, can re it is a symbolic language. When they talk about a gatekeeper, it is things that you let in and let out, correct? A gate opens or a gate closes. Now, whenever you have a gatekeeper and somebody talks to you specifically about a gatekeeper, it is for a reason of opening or closing. Now, is it opening or closing for you? Opening. That is correct. Michael is opening a gate of understanding for you at this time. Your fourth dimensional energy and your understanding of spiritual things is increasing. Not that it wasn't good before, but there is something that is coming to you that is greater than it was before. Is that true? Yes, very much. Yes, and so the gate is open for a greater understanding right now. But not only for spiritual, I see that there is an understanding of people that is coming to you. You're understanding people better. Does that make sense to you? Yes, it does. And when you're understanding people better, you're seeing that your spirit is changing toward them. Is that true? Yes, very much true. So what else did you need me to tell you about this? Um, um, I've been drawing the, uh, the artwork more, so I think that that's what's coming through as well, and I'm Absolutely. sharing it. Mm -hmm. Yes. He's, when things open, it opens up in a lot of different places. But what I see is the spiritual form opening that is creating a lot of good things within you, a lot of stimulation. Would that be one reason why um, <clears throat> in the morning when I wake up, my whole body feels like it's hot on the inside, like it, like it's burning off things on the... Yes. Okay. I wonder there, what that was. The thing is, you are driven at this point. You're driven to do many things. Well, drawing and creating is one of them. But your understanding of many things is opened up. So it is a beautiful thing. The fire will stay with you for a while. Okay, thank you so much for answering the questions. You're, You're welcome. Much love. Much love. Thank you so much. Well, Uriel, we're so happy you stopped by today. Your messages are Thanks. always so beautiful. You are awesome. <laughs> we're wondering if anyone else wanted to pop in and say hello. There are others that would like to speak and share. So I will allow that. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, man. <laughs> so therefore, be well. And let me give you a very small blessing before I go. May all of you awaken to a greater understanding of God and light and what love truly is in the world. Let it become more palpable. 
may become more tangible. May it become more part of who you are so that you may see the world through love instead of just society and things of this nature. Let your world be colored. I use the word color again by the love that you feel. Amen. There is a question in the room before we go. Sure. Yes. Do I need to be closer? Can you hear him? Yes. No. Yes. Oh, he's coming closer. Okay. Um, is there a way for me to be able to focus on just the healing work that I do instead of trying to get other types of jobs to fuel that passion of just doing the, that full time? Well, what do you believe? Your belief system has much to do with what you do in your life. If you believe that your healing is more important than anything else, then reach out and take a leap of faith, a step of faith so that that can be what your life is about. If you believe it can be, it can be. And if you believe it cannot be, or if you believe you need some other forms of support, then that's what will be. But take that thought process what do you really believe about your healing what do you really believe about wh what you are doing this can be a an answer for many people's questions what you are doing do you believe that's what you should be doing is that your highest excitement as well it's spoken on your planet is it the thing that you want to do is it the thing that makes you the happiest and brings healing to other people, brings love and example to other people. That is what you should be doing. So move in a way that makes it happen. Okay. Now, I cannot make decisions for you or for anyone because you all have your own free will, as you understand. But you can make decisions to move towards your greatest happiness and your greatest love of God, because your greatest happiness is what God wants you to be doing. And it will help you to love God more, won't it? If you're doing what you love to do, you're going to be saying, thank you, God, for letting me do this, for giving me this talent, for bringing me to this place. And your joy will be great. Go with that. Thank you. Much love. Much love. Thank you. Uriel, I'm... Uh, I know I <laughs> Oh. Oh, no. Um, actually, well, Pete really wanted to ask you a question before you leave. Very well. Hi, Archangel Uriel. It's been a while. Hello. How have you been? I am wonderful. I'm wonderful, too. And I was wondering if I could ask a few questions. Yes. Okay, my first question is based out of astral travel. And yes. I was wondering, how can I allow my physical body to, how we say, let me go into the astral world for a bit? Your astral travel is predicated on your belief system, for one thing. At your visionary vision of yourself, for another thing. And who you are in this life, in this physicality, know that you can move from it and believe that you can do so. If this is what you believe, and if this is something that is important to you, God will help you to facilitate it. Why would it be important to you to move astrally? Can I ask that? For the sake of adventure, for the sake of the highest joy and excitement that brings with it. Would it be to help others? Yes. If you give it a non-selfish use, if you give it a higher use and higher service, 
it's more likely to come easier to you. Okay, so the next question I have is, which, based on my astral travel, who is my spirit guide to connect with in order to assist me? Your spirit guides are those that are with you. I cannot identify them because the protocol for uh, higher selves and spirit guides are that they should let you know who they are themselves. It is not right for me to point out um, those that want to introduce themselves. But you will find that they are with you. And if you call on them as your higher spirits, you're the, those that are helping you to guide you, you will find that they will help you whether you know their names or not. Oh, okay. Okay. Um, my, thank you so much. Thank and you. My, and my last question was, how can I get along well with my parents? Because they seem to input negativity onto me based on their belief systems. How can the greatest I be able thing, to The greatest balanced? thing for you to do when there are negative forces around you is be a positive example. There is no way for you to change other people because they have their own will they have their own decisions to make and they, they bring in their own karma and create their own karma. They have decisions that they made that have caused them to be the way that they are. They have brought in this negativity and they had a reason for it. And they might have thought it was a good reason at one time and it might not have been. It might have been a deception that they brought in this negative energy. Now, the very fact that you cannot get along with them does not mean that you are a negative person, but it may mean that you have to change how you interact with them. You must not keep them in a negative cycle. If they bring negativity to you, return positivity. Be the example and not the problem. Be the example and not the problem because there is no way you are going to change their negativity. They have to change it. It is their decision. There's no way to say, hocus pocus, you're not negative anymore because they have grown up with it. They have accepted it and let it become part of who they are. Now, once again, be the example. Do not interrogate, uh, or uh, I'm not sure what the word is, but antagonize them to be negative. And if they are negative, just say whatever positive thing you can about that situation. And maybe the best thing to do sometimes is not say anything at all, but do your positive activities as you will. Thank you so much. So much You're for that. I was You're wondering welcome. if I could get a give you a blessing before I left. Very well. No hona hi ana koto shi na na kai ana ho hi na da kashi to na no hi akana ya to no. O yo ho ni ha ha kana yo to no kai ta na yo kono shi no ya ya. Ayoho ya ra kaneki ya tanana ko yoshino yi kanatana. Blessing. Thank you very much. I will not interpret that because it was very personal. But thank you so much. Thank you, Uriel, for stopping by. Beautiful, beautiful answers. We love you so much. You are so welcome. Much love to you all.
we hope that it is appropriate that we come. Hello. We are from the Zeta Gray peoples. I am a ruler of such species. Thank you so much for joining today. We've come to thank you for your support and gifts of prayer, thanksgiving, and healing. It is important that we reach out and thank those that are responsible for such things. It has been a long time since emotion has been great. There was some emotion, of course, but it was in a very mild and almost suppressed thought process. Now there is joy and thanksgiving, happiness, for my wife is now with child. This is something that is not less than a miracle. Emotion now fills me because it was not possible before. Sometimes in the past, we believe that not having so much connection with emotion was a positive thing, that intellectualizing and being logical were much more important and much more helpful. But we have realized over time that it takes away some of the decision-making parts of our being to help with understanding situations in some cases. I will not go into detail but there have been many errors made because we could not feel the appropriate right and wrong of the situation. And now we are grieved at some of our past decisions, but now we must look forward and not grieve about the past. But as we are here, be with you if you need us. There have been times when we have not been friendly. In fact, we have spent much time not being friendly and not being helpful to your peoples or species. But we will now change a thought process that has been detrimental. We ask for forgiveness but more than that, we are thankful for your healing energies. We never thought them much use before because technology and medication were healing enough. But we were wrong. 
this energy is of a different kind of medication and cannot be duplicated by science. That is all I have to say. Thank you for coming. Are you willing to take any questions or are you moving forward? If there is one or two questions, but I wish not to stay long. I understand. You're busy with your pregnant wife. <laughs> there is um, much other things to consider. The kingdom must be looked after. Yes, yes. Okay, well, very quickly, could you please um, elaborate on the fact that um, per the royal decree, you have commissioned for negativity to stop towards humanity from the Zeta Gray Collective. Um, I believe I heard that the negative implants, um, all, all implants that had cloaking technology that were unable to be detected by other technologies have been turned off. Is that correct? It is in the process of being revoked or changed, yes. Okay. Turned off is not the appropriate way to say it. But okay. they are being dealt with. That is... And yeah, I do not know if decree is the right word either, but we have made treatise with Galactic Council with your names on it as well. It is greatly appreciated, and I feel as though, um, as a whole collective uh, for the entire galaxy, this is very healing, and um, I am looking forward to people moving forward positively, um, despite what happened in our understanding of linear past. Um, there were questions regarding uh, the negativity in terms of the Zeta Grays that are controlled like puppets, um, the ones who seem to be avatars. How is that going to work? Not all are puppets. There are also puppets of the artificial intelligence species. But the ones that were our slaves will be dealt with in a different way. We have not decided how this will be done, but it will take a more humanitary stance, as you call it. Okay. From what I understand, uh, your feminine, your divine feminine energy has been restored. Um, you and your um, partner, the queen. Um, Correct. And you have had your souls returned essentially it was still there but it was not as bright as it is now what it is meant to say is the soul was brightened it is not that we were without souls but they were very dim are you reconnect oh i'm sorry i did not say anything oh my bad um from what I understand, uh, what had happened to the Zeta Grays is they um, um, moved forward focusing on the intellect and the third eye energy um, and kind of got disconnected from their heart energy as they are also children of Gaia from a different dimension in a different reality. Is that correct? Correct. Forgive me for this is somewhat embarrassing to speak about. For it was a great neglect on our part and very embarrassing that this must happen for us to be reconnected so strongly. But thank you for your understanding. Please allow us to 
grow a little before we speak more about this. It is a delicate time. I definitely understand. Um, and I feel personally as though this is very healing and in many regards and there's much that many different species are able to learn from your example and I really appreciate um, what you guys must be going through, especially in terms of having emotion, emotions again and the queen being pregnant with emotions. So, um, so we send our blessings to you. And I know there were other questions, but you wanted to keep it short. So um, forgive me, but I would like to leave. That is fine. I came here for, to give thanks, and I have done so. Right now, we need to regroup as a peoples and give understanding to what we have gained. It is all coming in so quickly. We need time to process. Yes, understandable. Well, thank you for stopping by. We send you love and blessings and blessings to your children. Please take care. This is Lakesh. Lakesh. And how are you? Hey, man. Yes, I have in for a very brief time because I know that you are having some very happy people here, and I just came to wish all very much well. Well, we are even more happy you stopped by. And <laughs> thank you very much. Thank you very much. I am um, here to just give my greetings and thanks. I do not know how much time you have left for your program about 10 minutes so i am here to just uh tell you that we are looking in we are very happy about the zeta craze we are very happy about many of the things that are happening and is there any questions for us right now yeah lakesh i heard that you got to stop by and uh say hello to the royals with their with their uh Yes. New amazing path. How how did that go? How did we your brought, We brought them some gifts for the new children. Oh, that's that so sweet all. of you. What were and, the gifts? And some very nice uh uh words of encouragement and told them that we would be there to be with them and encourage any friendship that might develop. Now it will have to be on their part that they reach out at this point, since uh, we do not want to force ourselves upon them. That is understandable. How cool. Everything is awesome. <laughs> um, yes. We have some questions. Yeah, uh, let's see here. Um, there was a question. Uh, let's see. Rhea is asking about what her connection is to the goddess Isis. The goddess Isis, if you're able to speak on that. Um, well, there's actually many people on your planet connected to Isis right now. But um, her connection to Isis is because in a prior life, she was, uh, she worshipped Isis. Ah, hi. Hi, Lakesh. Uh, and, yes? Hi, Lakesh. What? It's Rhea. <laughs> Hello. Yes. You were, you were a very staunch worshiper of Isis in the past when you were in the Egyptian era. You weren't in the, in the great cities of, uh, of Egypt, but you were in a desert area that was with a great tribe of nomadic people. And they moved about, but their, their dependency was on Isis. And Isis did a bit as far as their belief system was concerned. Uh, it begins with D, Dadera. They, oh. Yes. The place where I was, that uh, begins with a D. I'm connecting right now with you. Uh, yes. Dadera? Da, 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 oh. 
Uh, Dardieras? Something like that. It was Dardieras. Yes. Dardieras. All right. That's it. So, yes, it was. That's why we that's wanted it. The place you were. It was a, what is called a what are they called? An oasis community. Uh, they moved from, there were three different great oasises that they would travel to and fro for different reasons. They, one oasis could not sustain their peoples for more than three or four months. And so they must nomadically move to the other and then stay there for three or four months and then move on. And then by the time they got back to the first, I see. This was about 8,000 years ago. Yes, that is about right. Yes. This is, is there a question? Uh, yeah, that's probably what, that was right. one, why I wondered about, well, I still have this connection with ISIS now. I thought maybe we were part of the soul family or soul group. Or, uh, well, I see what you, I see your past. That was a very good life for you because you were, you were like the priestess of the group. And um, you, you see that, don't you? Yes. <laughs> you were a high official of the, that tribe, and you were very much uh, acclaimed and had very much wisdom and knowledge. And Isis was very much connected to you in the sense that you had some psychic abilities. So therefore, yes, it was a very good time for you, and you remember it very clearly. And there is some of that coming back to you in this lifetime, and so that's why you are connected to it. Yes, there is. I, I, I believe in most of my incarnations, I've been priestess, or high priestess. Um, my life in Atlantis, does that have something to do with being a priestess as well? You are part of the third council of Atlantis, um, usually they had five major council members and you were on the third, the third complete council after the passing of the first and second councils. So, um, yes, you were on the third council. Yeah, it holds dear to my heart still. What, it does hold dear to my heart what happened. It does. Uh, yes. But... Um, I want to thank you so much, Lakesh. I do love you. I, I, <laughs> yes, I love well, you so thank you very much. much. I try to connect with you sometimes. I just go, oh, Lakesh. I don't know if, I'm, if I am connecting. I just, I think of you and I try and connect. I could be just daydreaming. I don't well, know. <laughs> I sometimes get connected to people, but it is awfully hard sometimes when I have my studies and different things that I do. I'm not always <laughs> connecting to your, the earth people, but there are times when I do, yes. Oh, thank you, Lakesh. Well, I love you dearly. We all love you dearly, and thank you for... Oh, I love you as well. <laughs> I wish your family well, your children, everybody. I love you. Oh, thank you. Thank you very much. Appreciate thank that. Thank you, Lakesh. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. <laughs> all right, awesome. <laughs> we have a question next from uh, Sheer. Sheer. Hey, Lakesh. Yeah. How are you? I am very well, thank you. Well, we just heard some great news about the Zeta Grays, but I have a couple of questions about it. Oh, very well, go ahead. Well, now that they are on the, let's say, the side of the light, does that mean that they are going to give us any information that is relevant to the Illuminati and those who control the Earth? And how is the Illuminati is going to proceed now? Let me tell you this. I know that they are on the side of the light now, but they have a lot of processing to do. It's a very new experience for them. It's very, very new. So when you head into a very new experience, who knows what they are going to do. They could revert again, but I don't think they will. But um, I think that they will head into a very positive thought process, but I think they have a lot of evaluation to do before you see a lot of action from them. Because you're not going to, it's just like anything new. You have to learn it first a little bit before you can act on it a little. So they're going to keep, they're going to, keep to themselves a little, for a little while. Does that make sense to you? Yes, but... but give, them a, give them a year or two with their newfound emotions and then you'll see probably some actions. But I'm sure they'll have some actions before then, but they'll probably not be great 
or very significant because they're probably going to have to simulate uh, a lot of awareness about what they're feeling, what has happened, what has been done, why, why, why. So you're going to see some uh, very, a very uh, introspective thought process on their part, I'm thinking, at least this is my prediction. I see, um, but if they were a part of the negative races uh, that came to the earth... Um, oh yes, they were, nothing, yes. Then if they turn on them, maybe those old factions will try to hunt them down, so... Well, let me tell you this, Shia. Those negative connections that they have with the Earth right now, they have to be very careful how, they're, how they move out of those areas or how to change those things because any major movement quickly could cause some devastation, even moving the negative out too quickly. Does that make sense to you? Because they have some connections with positive that they are, let me put it this way, it's a negative connection to positivity that the positive side doesn't know it's negative. And so it's a deception. And if they were to pull out from that deception quickly, it would cause great problems. Does that make sense to you? So they are pretending. So yes, they are in some very, very, very delicate situations. And so they're going to have to um, be very careful on how they react. Okay, I see. Thank Thanks. you very, very much. And Thanks. since last week that I asked you if it's a, a possibility for me to visit you astrally, something happened? Uh, not yet. There's been a lot of things going on, especially with the Zeta Grays, etc., blah, blah, blah. So we haven't really taken many people up recently. So just give us a little time to uh, get things in order. You have 24 hours. Just no, 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 don't give me a time limit. No, no, no. <laughs> I love you, Shia. We will see you soon. Thank you. Much love to you. Much love to you as well. Thank you, Shia. Um, I think the time must be up by now. Yeah. It, unfortunately, I wish we have so many more questions. I'm sorry really, for everyone who was unable to get their questions answered today. Um, but thank you for stopping by, Lakesh. We love you so much. Much love to you as well. But be patient with the Zeta Grays. They have a lot of work to do. They're in a lot of negative situations that they have to pull out gently or change in some way, and they are really not sure how to do that. Well, Why and that? just to... Just to clarify, sorry, I don't want to interrupt, but uh, it, it is their king and their queen who have had this healing done, and they are the ones who are in this new state of mind. So, you know, that has to also be taken into account. Yes. Yeah? Yeah. Oh, yes, and they will change things, but it has to be done delicately. Yeah, definitely. Thank All right, very well. Nice to visit with you. Thank you, Beautiful Lakesh. People. Take, Take care. care. We will see you I soon. Bye-bye. I love you, Lakesh. <laughs> we shall speak to you soon. Very well. Hello, everybody. Welcome back, Jim. Hey, how are you? Oh, there's so, so wonderful. That was absolutely amazing. I feel so blessed that uh, the Zeta Gray King decided to stop by and provide clarification because I feel this is so incredibly important for well, everything. I, <laughs> I knew they were coming first because they were not planning uh, you made a big deal about it, so they plan. They weren't planning to come for a couple weeks, but oh, since wow. you did talk about it, they were. They decided to come. 
Oh my God. Well, I just feel it's so important because there's just been so much misunderstanding and just, oh, I don't know. You know not sure what to say, I don't think. Yeah. So. Yeah, well, I really appreciate that they did stop by. And thank you, of course, Jim, for helping this happen. Oh, well, my gosh. I, I, I accepted that. I knew he was there after a while. Uriel told me at one point that he was going to come, and I'm going, oh, okay, that's fine. So, uh, but I didn't know when exactly, so. Yeah, it was truly amazing. Um, Great, good. Wow, just so much wow. I mean, it was an intergalactic effort. I mean, from all across the cosmos, the Galactic Shamanic Council and shamans not even in the council from different worlds all over, whether they knew they were sending healing yes. or not, they were all contributing. So it's just such they, a beautiful yeah, they have a, event. They have a lot of things to... Uh, what I got from his contact with me was that... Um, they were in a very, uh, they're sort of still in shock. Yeah, yeah. So um, it's yeah. sort of a, it's like a very humbled situation. They're very humbled by everything. So, and yeah. so he was not like wanting to really talk about it too much yet. I definitely understand. So. I'm, sh I'm so shocked and happy that, that he stopped by. So um, thank you everybody for participating today and for being a part of this amazing event as always we love these saturday webinars it's a miracle these are even able to happen so thank you everybody for contributing your energy um we can move to some blessings um before you have to leave jim i know you you have to get well, going there's a lot of people here and they've been sitting for a while and everybody's been sitting for a while so we'll wrap it up sure um if you want to leave before we do blessings you're absolutely free to Oh, um, no, we're going to, I'll wait. Okay, all right. So, I, um, they told me I have to interpret at least three. Oh, interesting. Um, I know that, uh, let's see, uh, Sheer had said he wanted to do a blessing. Did you still want to do that, Sheer? Yeah, sure, I can do a blessing. All right. המון אהבה, אנחנו מודים לבורא עולם, אנחנו מודים לשבע כל כתבי האל, לאלוהים, אליהה, אל, אלאים, אנחנו מודים למלאכים הבכירים, גבריאל, מיכאל, אוריאל, על זה שאתם איתנו, מגינים עלינו, רפאל, אני רוצה להודות לכולם, אני רוצה שכולנו נהיה בחוויה ועוד אייו, ושנואב ושתמיד נדע להעריך את מה שיש לנו בידיים, ולקחת את הכוח להתעלות ולעלות למעלה. They said you you can interpret that one. <laughs> yeah. <in. Hebrew. laughs> yeah, it was you, you they said oh he knows he knows what he said. Okay, go ahead. If you want to interpret it. Ah, I said that um, we thanks the L collectives. And we thanks the Archangels and we thanks the Creator and we thank them for helping us and to help us know and to appreciate and love and to move forward in our ascension. Wonderful, beautiful, thank you. Thank you so much. Um, I think that Pete had said he was willing to do a blessing. Okay. Hi, Pete. And Angie here wants to do one too. Okay, I'm gonna do a blessing specifically if they're hearing me right now with the Zetas and with their newborn and their little ones. Okay, and for the whole the rest of everyone here. No hina hai di tika nai ho yoto no ya. Ayoko dia la kania waka yata no yoko ha. Yo yako yoto yaka no yoto na yaka yita ya. Yo wako yoto no yo yoto no ya. Yamanaka yoto yoko yata na yoko ya. No yamanaka yoti yamanakia. Blessings. Dear new friends. 
we reach out to you and tell you to relax in your newfound emotions and let love rule and reign. We will help you as much as possible, but we will find that there is mutual friendship here and the light will guide all of us together. Beautiful, thank you, Pete. Uh, Gabe has a blessing. Yeah, I wanna bring some Actorian happiness for everybody. So continue with your day being happy. <laughs> yes. They said that healing and blessing is the name of the day. They are making it a healing and blessing day for all who is who needs these particular things. Thank you, Gabe. I love that so much. It's hilarious. <laughs> um, and Angie's here too. Angie, please, next. You may call us Krafastia. We are his family, you know. We are very happy that the Greys have their emotions back. It is yes. a great thing for us, Dracos. We have something to speak yes. to them. And look at you. That was specifically for the Greys, and they will—they know what it, they said, and it was a private and personal message of blessing and thanks. So thank you very much. That was good. Thank you, yes. Andy. Okay, Angie in Jim's room, please. There is much light in the universe, but let it fall on these that need it the most. The greys who are just awakening again, and those that are needing the light in their lives that weren't, was not there before. We are here to bring you hope and to bring you confidence that things will move in a good direction and positivity will abound. Be of good heart, for we are your neighbors in prayer. It's beautiful. Thank you, Angie. Okay, uh, Will has a blessing. Hello. Hello. Here now I a hot oil to know your Cheshire. Now, so I had a no chaka water tas and a here tawataya. And a hose or so I shall water in a now washing no, 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 so I there. Namaste. Healing are the hope for the future we hold with us both and we will share with all who want to have 
There is a great abundance of light. There is a great abundance of love. And we will share with those who want it. Remember, our hearts are open to the hearts that are open to us. And we will know that healing is a pathway to understanding and wisdom is for those who know when to use it. Thank you, Will. Gorgeous. Okay, lastly, Wendy from Languages of Lights would like to provide a blessing. Good morning, everyone. What a beautiful afternoon day. Thank you all for being here. I'm overcome with emotion, with the validation, and confirmation of the information today. Thank you for bringing it invaluable. Wendy, it's very difficult to hear you. Um, it's a little choppy, so I don't know if there's a different area in your, in your cabin. With yeah, it's very it? choppy for me, very choppy. But I heard some of it. Yeah, we heard a little bit, so heads up. Part, there is a part of the heart that cries out with joy and thanksgiving that things have happened the way that they have. We give support and great encouragement to you who have just joined us in feeling of the heart and feelings of the mind. Do not be discouraged, for with these feelings come great responsibilities, and we know that you understand this, for your people will be given the great understanding that you are enlightened and your wisdom will grow with each day if you wish it to. Reach out to God, who you know very little of. He will invite you into himself and let you get to know him much better. That was beautiful. Thank you. Wendy, thank you, Jim. Um, even through the internet uh, issues there, Jim was able to pick up on the vibrations and that really says a lot in terms of the high energy. So, wonderful. Yeah, thank you. High energy here. Definitely. That's definitely true. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Beautiful, beautiful energy here. So, no problem. Yes, it really is. We are so blessed. All of us are. Thank you, everybody, for joining today. Thank you all who are watching now or later um, and contributing your energy. We really appreciate it. Please do check out humancolony.org to stay up to date on what we're up to. And um, please don't hesitate to reach out. And also, let me add, Jim Charles, of course, offers amazing private sessions where he will do this incredible channeling for you personally. For your own um, private questions that you have, you can contact him, uh, Jim Reiki at gmail.com. So, yes. please reach out to him. That's Jim, R E I K I, at gmail.com to set up a private session. You can also go to humancolony.org slash Jim to see um, some of the many beings that he channels and um, uh, what he offers and everything. So with that said, we're going to close out for today. We love you all. Namaste. Love you all. Talk to you later. We shall see you soon.
Excellent. Love you. Thank you, Jim. Love you all. All right. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.